How does the vision of a father become a passion of the son? Jay Van Ando was my father, but he was no ordinary man. He was an incredible visionary, and he inspired us as kids. My parents had a powerful vision to not only foster world-class research and science education, but also to enhance the West Michigan community in which their dream would thrive. I had a call from Dave Van Andel in my office. I wanted you to know that the family has decided to make an investment in the community and we want to do it around health and research and health, particularly on cancer, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. I sat on the phone as an economic developer, literally fist pumping and saying, yes, it's the start of a new industry. It was transformational. We started with nothing. I mean, the site that we're sitting on at one point in time had a convenience store and all sorts of different things. But nobody was ever thinking about putting a medical research institute here. A lot of people lend their names, but they don't really go and roll up their sleeves and dig deep with the um, organization. And we feel very strongly that we are all in and we have to guide and direct the Institute in its path. Under the leadership of Dave Van Andel, a talented team of advisors, including Dr. Luis Tomatis and Nobel laureates Michael Brown, Richard Axel, Joseph Goldstein, Daniel Nathans, Philip A. Sharp, and others, laid the groundwork for the initial stages of the Institute's formation. So we set about to find our founding research director, one of our first stones in building this dream. Now that stone happened to be Dr. George Vanderwood, who came to us with sterling credentials forged at the National Cancer Institute. A very vivid picture in my mind was the actual ribbon cutting. My father-in-law had been diagnosed with Parkinson's and at that time it, it was quite severe. This was probably gonna be one of the last times, if not the last time, that he would do this. As I watched him on stage, and I watched David alongside him, he allowed him the opportunity to cut that ribbon. And it was very hard. David knew that this was his father's moment. I was um, watching a point in history that was never going to be repeated again. And I was glad that I took the time to wait. It was special. The stage was set, and the world would soon see the rise of a new state-of-the-art independent biomedical research facility. There is not a huge scientific footprint here in Grand Rapids. Uh, and so, you know, if you have a focus and you shine people can see you. And so what we've done is to actually not only develop a focus, but to make sure that people can see us. And that's what's happening. We are on a trajectory to become a world-class institute, both in terms of research in epigenetics and Parkinson's disease. In the field of epigenetics first, the research is cutting edge. And we're doing work in developing new drugs to treat cancer patients. And importantly, we're actually testing those ideas in human beings as we speak. The Van Andel Institute would not only bring hope through research, but hope through education. The Van Andel Institute for Education is all about supporting teachers and students. We bring students in, we have summer camps, we have after-school programs, and we really stage those experiences for students to do inquiry-based learning, hands-on learning, project-based learning, where they are discovering scientific principles and also different cross-curricular areas of reading and writing and math. The mission of the Van Andel Institute Graduate School is to train the next generation of biomedical research leaders. So both the students that come out of our graduate school, but also the processes that we've built into the graduate school are changing the shape of how biomedical research education takes place. A rich history, world-class talent, and a robust educational strategy have given the Van Andel Institute momentum in becoming a global force. But their greatest strength is in what they can achieve together.
in orchestrating collaborative efforts with academia, industry, and philanthropy to cure diseases and improve human health. We expand our footprint way beyond Grand Rapids by collaborating with the best institutions in the world. We can act as a hub to bring academic institutions and disparate drug companies which might be essentially competing with each other to actually collaborate with each other so that we can actually impact human health in this way. We are relatively small and focused and therefore nimble. We can make decisions quickly. We have a strong base in terms of philanthropic funding which allows us to do high risk and very innovative projects. And we actually love to collaborate. And we're interested in pushing our ideas into clinical trials. What we have to understand is without research, there is no cure. So philanthropy for the Institute is very important. Our donors understand and they see and believe in our mission. And with all of this, we all collaborate together. I know that we are gonna find that cure. Once you realize that there's hope, that there are people that are working on your behalf that you don't even know, that's energizing because we can give that hope to those people that have heard those words and think this is the end, and in reality, it's just the beginning. Today, we are absolutely filled with hope for the future. Why? Because the city and the community and so many others have helped spark a renaissance of scientific innovation that has given rise to a world-class research institution. How many people can wake up every day and have a frontier in front of them? I don't have a job, I have a hobby, I have a dream, I have an enthusiasm for this stuff. It makes a big difference.